In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to give you some tips on when you might want to use the chapter function in CyberLink PowerDirector. For most of us, we find that by default, the chapter track is one of the tracks that's at the very top in the track section in our default window. What's it there for? How can I use it? And when don't I need it? Those are some of the questions we're going to answer in this brief tutorial. The primary function of a chapter track is to break up a longer project so that you can decide where your viewer might be able to jump to when you create a DVD. This is much like the chapters you see in any Hollywood production. So if I want to do that, I can go into my chapter room, which is the F11 key, click on the icon there, or simply click on the chapter one in the chapter track. It'll get me to the same screen. We have a separate tutorial on all that you can do here, but just for now, for the sake of our tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of chapters by default. I'll just click on this one icon and it will create sequentially numbered chapters and we'll use this as an illustration here. And now I have several chapters. Now if I were producing a DVD in the final production I could go in with my chapter tools and rename each of these and there are the places to which the user could jump when they're playing the DVD of my project. But what if you're not going to produce a DVD? Do you need the chapter information anyway? Well, let me give you one situation where it might be helpful. If you have a long project and you want to be able to move from one place to another very easily, and you're not simply going to go from the end of one clip to the end of another clip, there's a way you can do that with the chapter markers. So I have these four markers. I can actually jump from one to the other. Now if you look very carefully, you have a seek by area here in the preview screen. Now the default is that the seek by is just a frame. So when I move the icon to the right, it will take me to the next frame. That's the period key on the keyboard. Or to the left, it's the previous frame that's the comma key on the keyboard. So if I'm here in my project and I press either one of those keys or click on the icon, if you look above the preview screen, you see I'm going one single frame at a time, right or left. But if I decide I want to hop between chapters so I get to where I want to do some fresh editing, all I need to do is click on the seek by and change the the offset to chapter. And you notice my icons changed here. I'm going to drag to the beginning of the clip. And now when I press or hold over these two keys, it says not next frame, next chapter. And it's the same two keys on the keyboard, the comma key for left, the period key on the right. And so if I press those keys, it moves me from chapter to chapter. So in a long uh, project, even if I don't want to produce a DVD, the chapters might be useful. And even if I make the chapter track invisible, I can right click on the very top and turn off show chapter track. When I go back and use these key functions or click on the icons in the preview screen, either way, it will jump to the same location. It doesn't need to see that track in order to obey it. We'll, we'll right click up here and we'll turn it back on so we can see it. So that's one place where you might use it even if you're not creating a DVD. So that's the function in general of what chapters are about and the chapter track. If I am not going to use them and don't need to be jumping by chapter in my project, I just right click and turn it off as we did a moment ago and give myself a little more real estate to use the tracks that I will focus on in making my project what it ought to be.